10. Minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6. Go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, <laughs> 1, 0. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour. Expanding the International Space Station while creating a classroom in space. I chose that amateur uh, clip instead of a, an official NASA one <clears throat> because NASA always cuts the sound out. Why they do that, I don't know, because the sound, that's really what it sounds like when you're three miles. I mean, it hits you in the chest. But I also wanted to show these two young ladies who are obviously um, first-time novices to a shuttle launch and being figuratively and almost literally blown off, blown off their feet. And it's, it's amazing. I've been to a few of these launches and uh, to see the power, an amazing, uh, the amazing power of this is, is just awesome. I would say, apart from the birth, being present at the birth of my two kids, it's the most awesome thing I've ever seen. Now, talking about my two kids, hi guys, um, they sometimes ask questions of dad, you know, like dads get asked questions. Hey dad, what was it like when you were a kid, you know, before fire and the wheel? <laughs> and it's like, hey, you know what, when I was a kid, we were doing this. And a few years later, I was flying between New York and London on this in just over three hours. You can't do that anymore. It's, it's almost like we're going backwards sometimes. But I've also been asked the question um, by other people, um, would you like to be 21 again? And my answer is absolutely emphatically no, because if I was 21, I wouldn't have lived through the most exciting time in human history to me. I, would, I wouldn't have missed all of this. Yuri Gagarin, the Mercury astronauts, and Neil, Mike, and Buzz on Apollo 11. I wouldn't swap 30 years of extra life if I had to miss this. But here's a little piece of trivia. This little globe of ours has had life in one form or other for about four billion years. Billion with a B, in case there are any politicians among us. And uh, in my short lifetime, We've, that life has taken its first steps, tentative steps off the planet. How awesome, how inspiring, how humbling is that? So no, I would not change 30 years of extra life to have missed any of that. But now the question is, people are saying to me, well, the space shuttle's done, space program's over, NASA's finished, nothing could be further from the truth. And I've got a few very intelligent people to, talk, to tell you about that explains that. This is Elon Musk. He wrote a little program called PayPal, and he sold it to eBay for $1.6 billion. What did he do with his money? He put it into a company called SpaceX. He's built and designed and flown two big rockets and the spaceship to go on top of it, and he's gonna be delivering cargo to the International Space Station, the ISS, in the next two months, in January. Sergey Brin, Larry Page, they're the founders of Google. They just put up the Google Lunar X Prize. $30 million to the first private entity, not government, that lands an unmanned spaceship on the moon. There's a whole load of teams doing this right now. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. He put his money into a company called Blue Origin. He's built a rocket, he's put a spaceship on top. He wants to put people in orbit within the next few years. And of course, everybody knows this gentleman, Mr. Richard, or Sir Richard Branson. He's put a lot of money into Virgin Galactic. He's gonna be testing the vehicle next year, and He's going to be hopefully flying people, private citizens, into space on suborbital hops within about 18 months. He's already taken in excess of $80 million in deposits on those flights. What is it that these really smart people know that we don't? They've identified the biggest emerging market of all time. It's called the cosmos. 
and it's limitless in resources and opportunities. And they're going to get it. Yet they stand on the shoulders of giants. Energia, the Russian corporation that put up Sputnik, Yuri Gagarin, and um, built the Mir space station. NASA, we all know and love, I hope. They put the first man on the moon. They have spaceships in orbit right now around Mercury, Mars, Saturn. They've got one on the way to Pluto. They've got the Hubble Space Telescope. They've got two rovers on Mars and another going this month. And gosh, what else? I mean, they're amazing. They're awesome. And they're still going strong. And of course, the United States Air Force, which is a very capable developer of space capabilities, vehicles, launch vehicles. These are the giants upon which the entrepreneurs of today stand on their shoulders. And they couldn't have done it without these people. So what's going on now? Well, the ISS has just been complete. It's completed, it's finished with the last two shuttle flights. And what that means is that now we've got six astronauts on board instead of three, which means a lot more science can be done because there's a lot of maintenance to do on the space station of this size. It's about as big as a five-bedroom house. And so there's a lot of really good science being done up there. When I say good science, we're talking biofuels, stem cell research, plants mainly. Um, they're, they're developing new vaccines on orbit that you cannot develop on the ground because when you take gravity away from all sorts of biological materials, the gene expression totally changes. So they're developing vaccines on orbit right now for Salmonella, MRSA, E. coli. They can't, you can't do this on the ground. I was just with the people last week. You can't do this on the ground. So we're going to see a lot of really good science coming out of the ISS over the next few years. There's another gentleman I didn't talk to about. Mr. Robert Bigelow of Bigelow Aerospace, he's the founder of Budget Suites of America. He's actually built the world's first space hotel. It's actually residing right now in a, a warehouse in Las Vegas where he resides. And uh, he's just waiting for the taxis to be ready in order to be able to put people back and forwards between it. That's all he's waiting for. It's built. And it's actually bigger and probably safer than the ISS. In actual fact, he's actually al um, he's already uh, orbited two one-third size modules. There, there's two of them up there right now that you've probably never heard about. And they were launched from a Russian nuclear submarine on a submarine-launched ballistic missile. Talk about swords to plowshares, right? This is the SpaceX Dragon. This is the vehicle that will be carrying um, cargo to the ISS in January. But it's been designed to carry seven astronauts. We just have to get all the safety procedures in place. And hopefully, this will be the next spaceship to take American astronauts on an American vehicle into orbit now that the shuttle's done. And of course, we've got Spaceship Two, Sir Richard's uh, Spaceship Two, which is going into flight testing next year. The interesting thing about Virgin is that Virgin's a British company, as you probably know, but Virgin Galactic's based here. And why is that? Because this really is an only in America moment. This is the only country that can bring together the innovation, the entrepreneurialism, the technical prowess, and the investment community to be able to do this. This really is an only in America moment. I'm not saying it will always be that, but right now, this is the place for space. Thank you. So, we're only just getting started. These are just a few. There's all sorts of people out there doing it. So, in the future, the previous space age that we've already lived through has been mainly government. Government has put up government employees and they develop science and technology that we can use here on Earth. And government's always going to have a place in space because it's strategically very important to the nation and to other nations. Uh, uh, national defense or security to uh, communications, global positioning, imaging, weather forecasting. Government will always have a place in space. But the new space program that's coming into place now is going to be more dictated less by the whims of congressional budgets, but more by the trade winds of commerce. And so what you'll start to see in space in the next few years is an actual industrial zone developing in low Earth orbit, where new products, new processes, new services will start to be created for the benefit of us on the ground. But it will also start the push outwards, because settlement is what it's all about. Because imagine, if there were other intelligences out there, wouldn't we want to find them? But even more or inspiring is, what if we're the only intelligent life in this galaxy? I mean, how awe inspiring how much of a responsibility is that? We could be the galactic elders 
of sci-fi fame. That's a huge, uh, a huge, awesome responsibility for us. It makes us more precious than ever. So basically, if anybody says to you in the future, hey, space program's finished, NASA's done. In the words of the old Mad Madison Avenue madmen, watch this space, because you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. <laughs>